Welcome to the Learn True Health Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 521. I am so excited for today's guest. We have Dr. Von Cook on the show. This is such an interesting topic. I feel like we're finally into the years of Star Trek. Like, <laughs> we're living in the future. <laughs> Uh, I, I loved, I was such a Trekkie as a kid and growing up, I love Star Trek. I love that idea that technology and holistic, the idea of health and technology could come together, that we could use technology to end all disease and end all suffering. And <laughs> that was such a neat concept. And a few years ago, I saw the Zyto at a chiropractic office and I was like, what is that? And then Jennifer Saltzman from TakeYourSupplements.com, who I'm a huge fan of and I I rave about um, their services. They really uh, are just a wonderful mix of holistic health um, practitioners and coaches that are committed to helping people get their health back through nutrition and supplementation. And they've been using the Zyto in a new way And I said, I need to learn more about this because I I tell my listeners, I'm the biggest open minded skeptic. So (laughs) for my first reaction is skepticism. And then I go, okay, well, let's let's stay open minded. Let's go deeper. And usually when I do, I'm pleasantly surprised uh, at what I find. So you have a technology that now we can use through an app on the phone along with our holistic health practitioner when you go to like take your supplements.com for example and they can hook you up with this and it it scans you and tells you what in, in such a detailed way in such a cr- crazy detailed way tells you like where you're off in your body and what we can do to support your body to come back into balance and i've scanned my husband myself and my nine-year-old son and it was eerily accurate. So I can't wait to dive into this science. So excited to have you on the show, Dr. Cook. Ashley, it's good to be here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I pretty much laid it out. This is, this is a technology that shows us how we can come back into wellness. And we're like living in the future with, with the Star Trek like technology now. But you know, my first, my first reaction is skepticism because it's like, oh, come on, you're telling me that uh, with an app and and with 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 what I hold in my hand, my smartphone, that we can we can learn about what my body needs, and and how we can support the body's ability to heal itself. That little skeptic, and I know some of my listeners might be skeptical, but of course open minded because they're listening uh, and curious, also wanting to know how how can they learn how to bring their body back into balance. So I want to jump all the way back to the beginning of Zyto. How did you get into this? Because it's super cool technology. Well, I got into it about 40 years ago. Uh, When I was a teenager, uh, I wasn't a teenager 40 years ago, but when I was a teenager, (laughs) um, I I developed horrific allergies and uh, they went away and then they came back and and uh, in the early 80s my wife and i moved our family to las vegas nevada and when we got there my allergies came back with a vengeance mm. and i had a neighbor who was a dentist and he said oh it's probably just something in, in your yard you're not used to that you're reacting to so he said i have this interesting technology i use in my clinic as a hobby uh, break a twig off of everything in your yard and bring it down to my office tomorrow at five o'clock when I close and I'll test you and we'll see if we can figure out what's going on. So the next day I had uh, three bags of three big grocery bags full of twigs and I walked into his office and he pulled this piece of equipment out of his cupboard and and it was it had a meter on it and a, and a metal plate on top. And then he handed me a, a ground, a little hand mass that had a wire that went into this device. And he would then put a twig one at a time on the metal plate on the top of the device. And then he would poke my finger with a stylus. And when he did that, the meter would then go up and the machine would make a funny sound. 
And I and and he explained to me that what he was doing was measuring the energy flow through my acupuncture meridian at the particular point that he was probing and the energetic influence of the twig on top of the instrument would the its effect on my body would be reflected on my body's response as indicated by the meter and the sound well you know it was a it was a totally goofy experience and uh, if i hadn't been suffering from allergies as bad as i was i probably would have gone this is crazy and the other thing is this guy was a credible guy i knew him and he, you know he was legit so it was like well it might be nuts but if it's good enough for him i guess i can sit through it at the end of the experience after we had, had tested every twig he said the only thing that you're showing a reaction to is oleander and pyrocantha and i thought well okay those are two things that we didn't have where we moved from so it's possible those are the culprits and uh then he went over to his cupboard again and he got a another instrument out and he got out a little three ounce amber dropper bottle and a fifth of vodka and he poured some vodka into this little bottle and then he put the little bottle in a, one, a well this new instrument he pulled out had two wells on top and he put the little dropper bottle with the vodka in it in one well and he took the ole, oleander and the pyracantha twig and he put those in the other well and then he twisted some dials on the front and he said okay what this machine does is it will transfer the energy from the twigs at a homeopathic potency and it programs it onto the water molecule and the alcohol mo molecule in the vodka and i you know this was uh it was strange you know i was i was a fairly open-minded guy but this was just weird and uh when he when he it ran for he let sit there for about five minutes and then he said okay here's your remedy gave me the bottle he said put uh 10 drops under your tongue three times a day so i went home and faithfully did that because i wanted to get rid of my allergies i was willing to try anything and on the 10th day my allergies shut off completely i mean it was All just right. it was nuts it was just it was like God stuck his finger up my nose and turned off the valve. It was, <laughs> it was, it was that dramatic. And I thought, wait a minute, I've had allergies for so many years. Nothing works like this. Nothing. It, it's got to be that the oleander and the pyracantha have just gone out of bloom and, and there's no more pollen. So I went out in the backyard where the oleanders were and they were still going crazy. I went out front the hedge along the driveway where it was covered with pyracantha and they were still blooming. The only explanation was it had to be this magic stuff that he gave me. And uh, that was my introduction to energy medicine. And it was so dramatic that uh, I then inquired of him and said, you know, tell me more about this. Well, it turns out that what he was doing is, is a technique that was developed in Germany. It's called electroacupuncture according to Vol or EAV. And uh, Vol, Reinhold Vol is the doctor who developed it. And then it came to the States in the 70s. And uh, there were a few clinics that used it, but it was mostly just, you know, the Mavericks and, and they were uh, doing interesting things. But I met then, uh, uh, Bill Roberson was the name of the dentist. And he introduced me to a doctor named uh, Fuller Royal, who had a clinic there in Las Vegas. And uh, then Fuller, uh, I got to know him pretty well in his clinic. And he introduced me to a guy named Roy Curtin. See, I'm, I'm giving you all the names in genealogy here, Ashley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, Roy had a company that built, uh, that, that had taken the EAV manual technology and had computerized the library. So they had developed a way to um, represent Oleander or Pyracantha with a digital code and then instead of having the twig and putting it on the test plate, you would go into their computerized database and you would activate the code that represented oleander or pyracantha. And it would create the same effect as 
putting the twig on top of the, uh, the test plate, on top of the metal plate. Mm-hmm. And, and so that revolutionized the whole EAV world in a significant way. And uh, so I ended up going to work for uh, Roy and his company for a while. And then I left and uh, started my own company and, and developed a similar technology. And that, I started that, oh gosh, it was in the late 80s. And uh, it's just evolved since then. So in the course of time, I've built several different devices that are used, we, that we've sold to primarily health professionals. Um, the reason is, is because with the EAV technology, back in the days when we had to take the stylus and actually probe the acupoint, the learning curve on that was fairly steep. And... Uh, you know, some people could learn how to point test in a couple of days. Most people, it took a couple of weeks. And you had to commit yourself to the process. Meaning, if I brought EAV into my practice and didn't use it on a regular basis, I just would never get proficient enough to make it work well. Um, and so it was a, you know, it was the doctors who were interested in that kind of stuff who really we sold the equipment to and uh, oh, you know everybody said gosh would it be so easy if you just would invent a glove and we could just have our patients put their hand in a glove and and then we could run all the tests that way so they didn't have to point test um, and eventually we didn't do the glove but we did what's called a hand cradle and I don't know if you saw the hand cradle Ashley yes. when you Okay. I I have I have seen I saw it at chiropractic offices. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I've never used the hand cradle myself, but I have used your most latest technology. Okay. And like I said, it was very accurate. Really interesting experience. But I'm sure we'll get there. Let's let's go back to the hand cradle because I'm I'm really enjoying this this history lesson of this technology and how it's been evolving. <laughs> Um, so, so that, that made it a little easier, more accessible for the practitioners. So instead of having to learn the, uh, the acupuncture points and know when to, when to touch each one with the machine. Now the, the patient comes in, puts their hand in a cradle with different, uh, metal pads and then the, it can read them essentially read their energy signature. Maybe explain a bit how that works. I'm, I'm just pausing cause I'm trying to think of how much uh, geekiness to give you. Please, all of it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Vol, the the original developer of EAV, had a student. His name was uh, Schimmel. And uh, Schimmel didn't like the idea of going from point to point because that's what Vol technology does. If you want to measure the large intestine, you go to the large intestine meridian and there's a point on that meridian. It's called the control measurement point. It basically gives you the entire picture of the large intestine on the left or the right side. And if you want to test the heart, you go to the heart meridian and you test the points on the heart meridian. So you can test points all over the body. And the reason it works, frankly, is because acupoints are hardwired to different parts of the body. Uh, there is a point that has a uh, a more direct connection to the you know the valves in your heart, and there's another one that has uh, a connection to the bundle of his, and one to the the muscles. So you can get a very detailed electronic assessment or exam of your patient by just measuring those points, and if you know what the points are. Uh, you get pretty intuitive and pretty uncanny in your ability to diagnose. Um, well, Schimmel didn't like the idea of going from point to point. It was just cumbersome and, and it took too much. And so he developed a, an alternative technique. He developed a technique where you would take a sarcode. A sarcode is a homeopathic remedy made from healthy tissue. So if you want to test somebody's heart, you would take a sarcode for heart and you would put that on the test plate and then you would just test one point and you test that one point over and over again because all you needed was just access to the body. Uh, and uh, he learned that the most significant part of the, the 
measurement was called the indicator drop. Uh, your body is a capacitor, essentially, and your mm -hmm. organs hold energy. And when you challenge the body with the vol equipment, you're putting electrons into the body through the hand mass, and then you're taking them out of the body at the stylus when you touch the acupoint. And the part of the body that that acupoint is most closely associated with will act as a capacitor, and the ideal reading is one that goes up to 50 on the scale and stays at 50. And what that's telling you is there is a proper amount of electron flow through that part of the body, and the body has the ability to sustain that flow over time. But when you get an indicator drop, when you touch the point, the meter goes up, goes up, and then as you hold the pressure on the point, the meter drops. So it goes whoop, and then it goes whoop. Shame, even making sound effects here for you. <laughs> and so, uh, and and what that tells you is that that part of the body is not functioning in a healthy, capacitive way and the resistance is going up and the electron flow is dropping and so it indicates a chronic problem. So that's the difference between acute and chronic in EAV. Um, anyway, Schimmel developed this, this uh, technique where instead of going from point to point, he would put the um, SAR code on the test plate and then he touched the point and watch the meter, and if the meter dropped, then okay, that's an indication we got a problem with heart, okay? And then what he could do is he would take remedies, and he could put those on the test plate at the same time the heart sarcode is on the plate, and he would then repeat the probe until the meter responded in a optimal fashion. And, and when that happened, then he would say, okay, there's a problem with the heart, and these remedies correct that problem. So here, here's what I'm going to prescribe to you as the patient. So that could be herbs, uh, that could yeah. be supplements, that could be... Could be drugs, it uh, could be anything, yeah. But So that really takes a lot of knowledge. Uh, first, just understanding the body, understanding remedies, understanding what the body might need, like the the practitioner is still very much the co the computer <laughs> and the and the the tool at the time was an incredible tool but it wasn't it wasn't intelligent in and of itself so you still needed really smart practitioners because if a practitioner like an md who's not trained in supplements or herbs or lifestyle medicine if they only have drugs they only have one slice of the pie and so they even if they had this machine they couldn't really ser serve that patient because they didn't know all the available um, possible remedies for that person. So the, the practitioner had to be really well versed to be able to correctly identify what that person's body needed. Well, honestly, that was one of the fun things about EAB <laughs> was, was it you learned that stuff really fast. Mm. Uh, for example, homeopathy, uh, I, I'm an expert in homeopathy, and I got that way in six months. And the reason it only took me six months is because I was using EAV equipment. And instead of going in and memorizing the remedy and the rubrics, et cetera, I would just test, and I'd say, okay, here's the, here's the energetic profile of this patient, and this remedy balanced it. So now I know that that matches. And um, so it's a fast way to get a lot of knowledge uh, and and honestly it, that makes it kind of fun but at the same time not every practitioner likes to do that right. and and um, it's not necessarily the most lucrative practice you could run so well you're helping uh, people get better and then they don't come back but they might send all their friends and family <laughs> well that's true but let's say that you're a chiropractor and you're making uh, significant money adjusting people and then you take time to do this kind of assessment, you could probably adjust you know, four or five patients while you're seeing one with the EAV equipment. Uh, so you know, so you would, it would get incorporated into practices. A practice like that, they may say, hey, we're gonna hire a technician, they'll run the EAV equipment, et cetera.
But um, but yeah, you did have to know more. Uh, the biggest challenge, frankly, though, was the point testing because when you're mechanically applying a stylus to an acupoint, you can manipulate the response. If you push hard, you'll get more electrons and the meter goes up. And if you don't push as hard, you don't get as many electrons and the meter doesn't move as much. So the practitioner was actually part of the circuit. And a good practitioner would develop the ability to know where the point was, apply the stylus in a consistent way, and once applied, they would hold the pressure constantly and give the meter a chance to move. But in the process of becoming a good practitioner, you also became incredibly intuitive. Uh, and it was because you were dealing with the body's energy and you you would just gain a an incredible sensitivity to the energetic situation or status of your patient. And you would even get to the point where as you moved the stylus to the point, you would know what the meter would indicate when you got the, the point, when you actually probed the point. You would know what's going to happen before you even did it. And... Um, and so that was also one of the interesting things about it, but it was one of the challenging things about it too, because people would, a patient who might be skeptical would watch this and they would experience the doctor pushing the stylus at the acupoint and they would see the meter change and they'd say, oh, you're just, you just pushed harder or you just didn't push as hard. And the reason they would say that is because if you push on a point that has a that's compromised in other words the part of the body that's associated with that point has a problem the probing will actually be painful so it mm. can be it can be an owie experience so it feels like you're pushing harder yeah and and then you put the remedy on the test plate or you bring it up on the computer and that's the balancing remedy, the pain goes away. And so a patient, even though you're pushing as hard as you were, the patient will say, oh, you just didn't push as hard because it didn't hurt. Well, the reason it didn't hurt is because we've got the remedy in the circuit now. And, um, but, but that was problematic because um, if somebody is not convinced that what you're doing is legitimate and you recommend a course of therapy to them, they're not going to follow through. And if they don't follow through, they don't get any good. They don't get the benefit. And, uh, you know, unlike prescriptive medication where sometimes you say, hey, take this pill and it's, it's going to make your headache go away. Natural remedies sometimes take a couple of weeks to work. And so you have to have a patient buy in and willing to follow through. And if they think that the experience was bogus in the first place, they're just not going to follow through. So, um, and that that wasn't much of a problem, really, because most people, you know, they were like me who would come into my clinic. They were there looking for help. And even if I said something that they thought was goofy, they're going to follow through because they want the help. Um, anyway, so, uh, so we're back to Schimmel. So Schimmel had developed this technique and and the technique is called using filters where you put the SAR code on the test plate um, when when we got into the computerized library uh, we had the ability to use either technique so you could use a direct vol technique or you could use the the filter technique you could load a virtual item into the circuit and leave it there like heart and then you could go look for a solution or you could not put it in and just test on the heart meridian and i'm thinking now as we progress forward um, the biggest challenge as a manufacturer of the equipment uh, you know i was a clinician i used it but you know i was in the business of building this stuff and selling it and the biggest problem was the learning curve. You know, it was a matter of 
finding practitioners who would be willing to commit themselves to the point of becoming experts and proficient. And honestly, I just got tired of teaching doctors how to point test. I mean, I taught so many doctors how to point test and and I was a guinea pig for a lot of them and some of them were pretty brutal as they were learning <laughs> how to do it. So, you know, uh, but I thought there's gotta be a better way. And so, uh, so I developed the hand cradle and the way the hand cradle started was, I just built a model out of clay and, and, uh, and the, the challenge was, okay, how do we, what are we measuring and how do we interpret the data? Because my background was EAB and, and I knew that forwards and backwards and up and down. And I thought, well, the hand cradle is really just going to be the next evolution of EAB. And uh, so we're going to have things like an acute response and a chronic response. We're going to have an indicator drop. We're going to have, you know, we'll have all of those things we had with EAB. And so I started to work on the hand cradle and it didn't take me long to realize, no, we don't, we don't have any of that stuff. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about the hand cradle. Uh, it looks like a big mouse. Uh, it's it basically when you look at it, you know that it's something you're supposed to put your hand on, and it has at the palm. There's a conductive plate at the palm, that's the ground, and then there are five conductive plates that you put your each of your five fingers on, and the computer then that that runs the software that runs the hand cradle. Uh, it in it runs an inquiry so it'll run it'll it'll measure the energy flow between the ground and your thumb and then the ground and your index finger and then the ground and your middle finger your ring finger and your pinky and it does that over and over again 50 times a second and what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, the the relationship of each of those points in other words, we're looking for the coherence that exists between them. And when we measure, uh, when we take the measurement off of the hand cradle, we measure a baseline. So we say, okay, your baseline coherence is X. And then what we do is we introduce a stimulus, and the stimulus would be whatever you've selected to be in the circuit. So something out of the database in the computer. And then we measure the coherent state again, and that's called the response. And then we calculate, well, did this stimulus make the baseline move to a more coherent or a less coherent position? And if it moved to a more coherent position, we give it a plus. If it moved to a less coherent position, we give it a minus. And then we can also determine how plus or how minus. So let's say that I'm in Bill Roberson's office again and he's using the hand cradle. Well, he could say, okay, let's just load in all the plants and run a scan. And maybe he's got 300 plants. So we run about uh, two items a second. And so in 150 seconds, he'll go through a list of 300 plants and he'll see the scores for all 300 plus minus and then how plus and how minus. And he can say, all right, the ones that are the most minus, those are the ones that created the most decoherence when they were introduced into your energy field. And so we're going to start with those. And, you know, it may have been Oleander, it may have been Pyrocantha that showed up, but it gives him now the information that he needs to begin me on a journey of healing using energy medicine techniques. So the, the measurement process, I mean, it, it took about six months to figure out the algorithm that actually does what I just explained. And... Um, when I got done, I realized that you cannot measure acute, you can't measure chronic, uh, because we're not, we can't see an indicator drop. All we're getting is plus or minuses 
on coherence. What we really have with that hand cradle is we have a very sophisticated automated kinesiology machine mm -hmm. that, te that tells you yes, no, and it tells you how yes and how no. And it, and it runs a comparison so you can see that, you know, hey, you really like this, but you really like this better. So, um, so the value of it is there's, there's really three values, I think. The first one was it cut the learning curve down to zero. I mean, you can learn how to run a, a, a software program in probably 30 minutes if you're comfortable with computers. Uh, you don't have to master point testing because you're not, the practitioner is not part of the circuit. And that's the second advantage. Second advantage is no patient is going to be saying, oh, you pushed harder because nobody's pushing. And then the, the, the last thing is it gives you more speed because you can, you know, I got pretty fast with EAV, but that's just because I did it a lot. But I'm way faster with the new technology, with the hand cradle, because it runs at computer speed. It runs a lot faster than I do. So let's go through some examples. Let's say a woman has hormone imbalance and she doesn't, she hasn't got any labs. She doesn't want to be put on drugs necessarily. She just wants to know how she could bring her body back into balance. And she like maybe her cycles off or she's got PMS or she maybe she thinks she's going into premenopause, but something's up. Um, is that too general, like not really knowing what the problem is or can someone use this technology sort of having a general idea of what the problem could be but it might not even the root cause might not even be in hormones right it could just be something disrupting hormones like stress yeah. and then what's actually creating the stress and so you have to go upstream to find the root cause so so how how would you know to what to plug into the the zyto software for the hand well, cradle um the approach that I take, and there are two approaches. One approach is a, a practitioner will say, I don't want to know anything about the patient till we run the scan because I don't want my interpretation to be biased by what they're thinking. Mm. Uh, my approach is just the opposite. I want to know what the patient is thinking, what they're experiencing. You know, do you have a diagnosis from somebody else? You know, what is it? Uh, I want to know those things because when, I, when the results come in, I want to be able to relate the results I see to what they think in a way that makes it understandable and credible for them. Mm -hmm. so, so, so now back to your, your question, and that is, so a woman comes in and she's got uh, hormonal issues, and, um, you know, I do acupuncture on her. <laughs> acupuncture is really good for that kind of stuff but mm -hmm. there's lots of things that are good for it um, the I, I need to, to say Ashley this the technology is not um, approved and frankly it's not researched enough to, for me as a manufacturer to make a claim that it is diagnostic or curative so, so yes, you can do what I'm going to tell you here in a minute, mm -hmm. but you, but you can't, let's say that a doctor ran a Zytoscan and, and, a, you know, the woman, uh, was having these problems and then something happened. She decided to sue the doctor and, the, and they went to court and they, uh, the, uh, attorney said to the doctor, well, how did you come up with your diagnosis? And he said, well, I ran the Zytoscan and that's what it indicated. Well, that's, you, that's not a legitimate defense because the zytotechnology is not approved to diagnose any particular disease. And the reason it's not is because we have not pursued uh, approval uh, because it would be too overwhelming. Um, it's more valuable to, to a practitioner to have a tool that points you in the right direction than something that gives you the diagnosis. And so if I run a scan on a patient and it shows up certain things, I'm not going to say, oh, this means you have this disease. It means, well, let's look here first and let's see if we can start to solve your problem by applying what we're seeing. Uh, and, and then if I have to go to court and they say, 
how did you establish your diagnosis? I would say, well, you know, it was the intake process and it was the labs that I ran and it was the, and it included the Zyto, but that's, but I made the diagnosis. So, right. And that's the proper answer there. Anyway, yeah, it, it so, guides you, it guides you. Yeah. And then you, as a practitioner would want to follow up with labs to confirm your findings. You do have FDA, your FDA cleared as a wellness scanner. Maybe you can, I know you kind of had the lawyers behind you whispering in your ear just now, you know, like you can't say this diagnosed, treats, cures or whatever, but it guides and gives information in a really non-invasive way. And then of course a practitioner would want to continue down the road of, of labs and discovery. Um, but what kind of, can you tell us a bit about the FDA clearance you do have? Well, the, the uh, hand cradle is registered with the FDA as a GSR device, galvanic skin response. Mm -hmm. And that's what it does. It just measures galvanic skin response. And uh, that doesn't mean that we can make a diagnosis. It just means we can measure galvanic skin response. Mm -hmm. Now, what, we're, what we, and, and I should say, Ashley, uh, when I, when I, make the disclaimer when I, you know, let you know that this is not diagnostic and it doesn't treat disease. That's not a tongue in cheek disclaimer. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really true. It, you can't, a doctor cannot make a definitive diagnosis based on a Zyto scan. Uh, it's, it's just, it's not, it doesn't do that. Um, and sometimes, well, I'll tell you how it works in my, in my practice. Uh, I run a scan, and if I suspect something, then usually I just run a clinical trial. I don't necessarily back things up with uh, more lab work. Uh, now, sometimes I do, but, and, and if I see something that I think is serious, I'll refer people to someone with more expertise in those areas than me. But um, most of the time, if you get an energetic profile of a patient with sufficient detail, you will have enough guidance to be able to build a clinical trial that will have positive impact. And so uh, it's kind of like... Uh, Let's go back to Bill Roberson and his scan, and he made the remedy, and he said, well, it's probably oleander and pyracantha, and here's your remedy. Let's give it a try. So he doesn't have to say you're allergic to oleander and pyracantha. He's just saying, this is what I'm seeing. Let's see if this fixes the problem, because if it does, that was probably the problem. And so you can run a clinical trial without... Uh, doing a ton of lab work, as long as you're not doing something that's, you know, that is uh, dangerous to the patient. Right. And most, and most of the time, that's what I do. So I'll get a profile through the, the intake process, through a physical exam. You can, you can know your patients pretty well. And, uh, and of course, with experience, you get better at it, but you know, that's the, that's how it works. But what we're getting with the Zyto technology is we're getting an energetic picture of what we call biological preference. So uh, it's it's not the same as this is diagnostic information. Mm -hmm. It's it's no your biological preference is that you don't like this or you do like this, and uh, if it's a supplement and you do like it, well then let's try it and see if it helps you improving your health uh, you know and and if if a supplement shows up or a, a remedy or an herb or whatever that's where the practitioner's knowledge comes in because if it's if you see somebody who comes in and they're having terrible um, pain and and they're having spasms and you test them and magnesium shows up you go oh well that makes sense so mm -hmm. let's give you some magnesium uh, but if something weird shows up that you, you don't have any knowledge of, you might go and study it. See, and that's the cool part. You then study it and you go, oh, I'll be darned. You know, it does actually have an impact on that stuff. So now you're smarter. But, <laughs> uh, but um, 
it's it's we're looking at biological preferences and that helps establish then the clinical trial that you might run with a patient. That's fascinating. Thinking about frequency and, and like kin- the kinesiology or like the, the, the body, be able to communicate its biological preferences like, oh, I'm, I'm, I really would love some more magnesium, right? Or I really would love some more leafy green vegetables and all the nutrients inside that. Uh, or, you know, really, I, I, my body does not like coffee or my body dislikes mold, like it's having a strong reaction. Um, and I think about, um, dar- so Rife, right? The Rife machine. And uh-huh. I read the book, um, years ago, I read the book, The Cancer Cure That Worked. That's like a really tiny book. You can read it all in one session, but it'll blow your mind. And how he had discovered that he could using using frequency he could like explode cancer cells for example like he figured out the frequency of that cancer the specific cancer and like a mouse and then he could using frequency not like nullify it and he would do that with other illnesses he'd figure out the frequency of that illness and then nullify it with the exact opposite frequency and all, all of his research was taken from him by an unnamed government agency and <laughs> destroyed. Uh, it's just wild when we see that so so many so mu- so many times when we're onto something big like this, it's wiped out. I I, I sincerely hope that you and your technology is um, you are protected. Your your technology is protected. That you no unnamed government agency comes after you. But I I think about that this isn't new, this concept, right? Like the concept of frequency and, and, and even kinesiology is something we've actually been doing for quite a while. And there's, there's different, uh, different ways that different practitioners have um, tapped into this. Uh, and I've experienced that like Nate um, type of uh, acupressure and, and uh, using the vials and frequency to, to, train retrain the body um i didn't have a hundred percent positive experience with nate and actually i don't know anyone who has but i just still thought it was really interesting um and i've I've had several practitioners use kinesiology on me and and my family very accurately like like you know you say for example hold up your arm and then we're gonna you're gonna hold this supplement i'm not gonna tell you what it is and then my heart arm just cannot stay up it just drops like it's just like i lose all the weakness all the all, all the weakness returns to my arm and then i gives me a different remedy and then i'm just my arm's super strong and i've had that experience where the body is like very clearly communicating what it wants and what it doesn't want so you you've created this in a way that's super easy for a patient and for the clinician to work together instead of having to have the hold the person's arm and push on the person's arm and then that person thinks well you you could just be pushing harder or using that that a device or the early on the vol you know where you could just be pushing harder right this takes this takes all the guesswork plus it's so quick that you can go through so many plants i i did a similar I don't know if it was the exact same, and this is back in the 90s, and I sat there for three hours as this machine ran through. I had to wear these electrodes on my body and on my on my fingers. And then, and it took the, I mean, this is, you know, so long ago, but it was late 90s, and it took the computer hours and hours and hours to process, and then it gave me the, this reading of, here's the foods you shouldn't eat, and here's the foods you should eat, and here's the supplements you should take. So, um it's been this concept of tapping into this their body and and the body's f- biofeedback uh, is is really cool and it's and and it gives it credibility. It's not it's not new. The, that's always been inside the body and practitioners have been looking at different ways of tapping into it. You've tapped into it in a way that is very replicatable. Um, now, when did the cradle first come out? Because uh, it's been you've you've had it around for a while, right? Yeah, I think uh, I started working on it in about 2000, and I think we had it built and released in uh, t- 2004. Yes. So we've had it, it's, we've had it out for 20 years. 20 years, years. nice. Yeah. So in that time, 
uh, you've evolved the software, you've gotten a lot of great feedback, obviously you as a practitioner as well. It's great that you you so readily work with the the technology that y- you've had a hand in, in creating. Um, you've evolved this technology though recently and I want to talk about its recent evolution into the app that now I have had the experience with. Can we talk about that? Yeah, yeah, we... We're always looking for better ways to accomplish the objective. And the objective is to determine biological preferences so people can make smarter decisions on an individual basis. Um, And so, uh, oh gosh, when did we start this? Maybe, I I forget, I could, it could have been seven years ago. Anyway, we started working on a, a new technology that allows us to create unique scans without hardware. And, uh, and we developed uh, a way to do that. What, what we did, Ashley, is the first thing we did is we developed a scanning algorithm. And that's just a mathematical formula that says, okay, if you start here and go down this list, you know, rank these things according to a response. But in order to make it unique, because if that's where we stopped, every time you run a scan, it would be exactly the same because our mathematical formula is, is set. It doesn't change. In order to make it unique, we had to have some real-time biometric input that would modify that algorithm in a way that for you, it would be different than it is for me. And for you, it would be different today than it would be yesterday or going to be tomorrow. So uh, we looked for other feedback loops that um, we were familiar with. And I I will tell you, we have one technology, it's called Evox. Uh, And we've got a, that's been around for 15, 16 years. We've got a lot of experience with it. So what it does is it, it does perception reframing. And we use voice as the primary input and the primary feedback loop. Uh, it turns out that voice is uh, topic specific and voice requires your entire anatomy to make. Uh, If I'm going to say something, I have to think about it. Then I have to engage my thorax and my uh, vocal mechanisms. And, you know, sometimes I move my hands and I might put some body language in there. But, the, but by the time you actually hear the voice when I'm expressing, all the information, all the perceptions, all the beliefs about that topic are carried in the energy of my voice. And you may have had the experience of listening to somebody speak and you go, eh, this just doesn't sound quite right, you know. Uh, there's something goofy here. And, and when you have that experience, more often than not, what you're sensing is that the words you are hearing do not match the energy that you're feeling. In other words, this person is probably either lying or they're hiding something. And you can pick that up. Well, what happens with Evox is uh, the, the most uh, common clinical application is that every disease process has an emotional component. And most of those emotional components are, they exist because of a perception that we have. And if we can reframe the perception, then it will release the emotional component to the health condition. So uh, to give you an example, I remember a woman who came into my clinic, she had chronic low back pain and had had for 20 years at least. And she had been all over the country. She spent thousands of dollars trying to get relief and nothing worked. And so when she came into the clinic, we put her on a program, you know, we're going to do, you know, the right remedies, the right supplements. We're going to do some acupuncture massage and we're going to do Evox. And so we had a particular protocol we put her on 
for perception reframing. And it turns out that this woman, when she was a child, she was born into an incredibly dysfunctional family. And as a child, she took on the belief, the perception that it was her fault. So as the child who was the recipient of all this dysfunction, she felt responsible. And and I don't know if this is actually the case because this Evox is not psychoanalysis. You don't you don't get into people's heads. But based on my experience with this patient, I think that she was holding on to her low back pain because it was her subconscious way of punishing herself for the dysfunction that she experienced as a child. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that perception was reframed, all of our therapies started to work. And in three weeks, frankly, in three weeks, this woman was out of pain. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, why couldn't anybody else do this? Well, she probably went to some really smart places and they did some really incredible things. But the problem was she sabotaged everything that happened because she had to hold on to the pain Yep. As punishment. Well, that's what perception reframing does. So so we have a, had a lot of experience with voice, and we knew that voice was absolutely unique. And so we built a technology that used voice as the primary biometric input that was then appended to our algorithm. So when you would run the scan we would then prioritize the results in a way that were unique to you at that point in time. And uh, then we took it a little bit further and we said, well, if we can do this with voice, we should be able to do this with other biometric inputs. Well, it turns out that uh, your pulse rate is, is uniquely biometric. Uh, your heart rate variability in your heart rate uh, is unique to you at any moment in time. And uh, your blood pressure is unique. Uh, there's all kinds of things. And all of these things, it turns out, can be read by pointing a camera on a phone at your face. And the camera then records this information. It takes about 30 seconds. And we then take all of that information. We turn it into a mathematical attachment that then gets appended to our scanning algorithm and boom, you know, we run the scan that way. And I think that's probably what you experienced. I did. Yes. You pointed at your face and it, the little circle went around it and said, yeah. Hey, we got your reading and away you go. Going back to what you said about your, your patient with the chronic back pain. Um, I had a similar experience about, um, 16 years ago, I worked with a client who came in with absolute chronic back pain and they wanted to do some major surgery, fuse her back. And um, I palpated her uh, uh, the her lower back and um, her quadratus lumborum on one side was hard as a rock and cold. It was ischemic. There was no blood flow. It was just minimal blood flow. Yeah. And the other side was soft and pink and malleable. Um, and I had recently dove into the world of um, Dr. Johnny Sarno's book, Healing Back Pain, where he uh, figured out that there's no anatomical reason why people should have the back pain. And even the surgeries were a failure, but they noted ischemia and they noted that there was an emotional component that was unconscious to the patient. But when when you when you when you get to the root cause and you like you said you do the reframing and you get to resolve and release that negative emotion the unconscious mind lets go of the muscle the unconscious mind is holding on to is creating the ischemia is creating the chronic pain and so i did um a whole breakthrough session with her did emotional work um i'm a master practitioner and trainer in nlp and timeline therapy and we when we got to guilt and I noticed every time she talked about things that she felt guilty about her pain would go up because I'd always ask her like and what on a scale of one to ten where's your pain uh so when we got to releasing guilt her pain went from like an eight to a zero <laughs> mm. and I went okay can I feel your back she stood up lift lifted her shirt up so I could palpate the lumbar spine and I saw 
it would go from white to pink. I saw the blood flow come back in and I felt her back and it both sides were warm. She ended. That was the day she ended. Now she had been on Tylenol threes for over 15 years daily. She, she no longer needed her pain meds and it was so cool. And that was my first experience helping someone out of chronic pain from an emotional event. And so when you say that, that, that by this um, technology that listens to your voice, that it could then help us pinpoint where's the unconscious trauma to, to, and, to, and help reframe them. And that is so beautiful because how, how, how many people are walking around on meds when they actually, their, their problem lies in the emotional mental body, right? We have we have layers of our consciousness, layers of our of our healing, layers of our of our existence. Right. We have a sp energetic body, spiritual body. We have a physical body, mental body and emotional body. And yet most medicine is just in the physical body. <laughs> but that's not necessarily where the root is and where the healing needs to be. So we 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 should really not discredit to the work we we could be doing on the energetic level, emotional level, mental level, and spiritual level. And and so many times healing takes place there. And then it, as a result, we have healing in the physical body. So I love that this technology is, is um, something that's readily available. Now, uh, talking about the, the, the scan. So yes, um, Jennifer Saltzman at TakeYourSupplements.com um, gave me access to the scan. Uh, if you If anyone listening wants to try it, please go to takeyoursupplements.com. Uh, you can talk to Jennifer for free. You can have a free consultation with her. She's wonderful. She makes using this technology affordable and um, and she's just a pleasure to work with. And so what happened was, and all the other coaches there are as well, but she gave me access to this app and it was very easy to use. And then after 30 seconds of holding my phone, it has to be a newer phone. It can't be, you know, like a 15 year old phone or whatever. It has to be a newer one because it has a better camera. But it then showed my pulse rate, my breath rate. Like it listed off all these things of like, oh yeah, of course. It could, it's reading those micro movements, even though it's being as still as possible. And it, it was reading so, so many things about me. But there's more than just the metrics there that, that, that we can see. Um, it started telling me where in my health I'm I, I'm weaker and I could use some more support um, and where I'm doing well and what and it linked me to specific herbs, essential oils, supplements and even therapies that would best serve me to come back into balance. And it was very insightful. So can you tell me a bit about how a, a technology that's observing my face for 30 seconds could be so insightful? Well, it's the same approach. What we're looking for is biological preference. So again, it's not diagnostic. Uh, when you look at that report, we're not saying, oh, you've got uh, a, a problem in your heart or you've got a digestive problem. What we're saying is your response to, the, to this item, it's really, we call it a library item, but as we scanned all of these items, you showed a less than optimum re result. In other words, your biological preference for digestion, let's say, that was your weakest link, or that was your lowest response. And therefore, we're gonna pay more attention to that because the answer is, well, why do you respond that way? And then we look for the opposite with supplements. Okay, what? What supplements are you showing a high biological preference for? And then we can match the two up where, well, if we put this supplement in the circuit with this digestive component or these digestive components, what kind of an effect does it have? And if it has a normative effect, then you'll see that the biological preference goes up in the digestive side. And we say, okay, well, that's a positive influence. So you know, the recommendation is this supplement. Um, again, it's not saying, oh, you have this disease and this right. cures it. It's just your biological preference indicates to us that you're weaker here and this supplement's 
resolves that weakness. And what's interesting in working with Jennifer Saltzman at TakeYourSupplements.com, she had determined what she thought would be best for me. And then a lot of it was confirmed with based on uh, her the questionnaire where we go through and we figure out, well, what is your body that your body is speaking? The symptoms of your body is a language, right? Your body is, spe- is always speaking to us. Our body is always communicating. We just have to know how to hear it. And so some of the things she already intuitively knew um, based on those metrics would be good. And then it was confirmed in this in this scan. And then there was a few that surprised both of us, but made sense once we looked at it was like, oh, yeah, that would actually be a really good, you know, therapy or supplement or herb or whatever it was. It was listing off. Um, But it was it was detailed and and really interesting. How often could someone get a scan? So let's say you get a scan and you integrate like the top five supplements or herbs or essential oils. And then you go for some of the top, you know, holistic therapies that are listed as the most beneficial for you at the time. And you're doing that on a regular basis. Um, would they rescan once a month, once a week, every day? How, how does that uh, work to optimally guide us? I would say you want to do it maybe every four to six weeks. Uh, and here's the reason. Your body moves energetically very quickly. Energy is the most young component of your body, which means it's the fastest to move. Your tissue is the most yin. That means it's the slowest to move. And when you introduce therapy into your being, you're going to move your energy very quickly. And, and, but it might take two weeks for your tissue to get, you know, to make the change. So if you're scanning and, and the scan is an energetic scan, we're taking energetic information and then converting it into this algorithm to make the scan. So uh, if I scan today and I started a supplement regime, and then I scan tomorrow and changed my supplement regime and then scan the next day and made a change appropriately, I would actually make myself sick because my body would never catch up to my energetic position. So uh, so when a patient comes in, if I'm going to give them some supplements that are intended to last for four weeks, I don't want to do another scan on them until they've had a chance to take all those supplements because I know that it's probably going to take them, you know, some people respond quickly, but most people, it can take up to two weeks for supplements to actually start doing their work. And, and, and the other reason is I don't want patients to come in and if I scan and say, oh, you need some new supplements and they haven't finished the ones I gave them, they're going to think, well, he's just trying to sell me a bunch of supplements. And, you know, that's not the purpose. The purpose is to help you get better. So let's give your body time to use what's recommended before we look for a new recommendation. Mm-hmm. So so the short answer is every four to six weeks is, is enough. Yeah, and I thought it was really interesting. My son, um, the top five things were actually like herbs and essential oils, nothing to do with supplements for him. And that was really neat to see. My husband was a combination of herbs and essential oils. I had some supplements that I'd already been taking and then a few more like plant extracts. Um, so it's not always like, you know, here's your, vi- you got to take your vitamins. You know, it's like, it's not for everyone. It's different, which I thought yeah. was just really neat that I, you know, cause again, that skeptic in me is going like, this, you know, this 30 second camera scan on my face, you know, what are you going to tell me? And surprisingly a lot. Um, I, I want to understand a little bit more about this technology because I, I can I can grasp that if my hands on a cradle and there's there's five finger pads in a ground that it's like I can understand, OK, the computer is doing these frequencies into my hands and it's a Galvox skin response and it's it's then testing my physiology against these frequencies of these different, you know, uh, therapeutics. Um, I can understand that, but I, I don't still 100% understand how the camera scanning my face 
is testing me against that. Can we go a bit deeper or is this proprietary? Well, no, we can we can go deeper. It's really a continuum. Um, and, and you mentioned it earlier, you know, most of what medicine does is it just addresses the physical body. It doesn't look at any of these other things. But we all access all of those things all the time in our daily lives. I mean, your son may walk in and you look at him and say, wow, you don't look like you feel well. He doesn't have to say, hey, I'm not feeling well. You can see it. And, and you may know intuitively what you need to do to help him feel better because you have a connection with him and, you know, it, it comes through. Uh, when, as a practitioner uh, who uses energy medicine on a regular basis, I mentioned earlier, you get really intuitive. And, you know, I can, I don't have to touch a patient to tell you where the problem is. I can just run my hand, you know, half inch, an inch above their body. And as I run it down, I'll tell you, that's a problem. That's a problem. And, and that has come just from, I mean, it may be something I was born with, but it's come in a lot in just practice. And, and so the subtle things are as meaningful as the grosser things. You know, the emotional health is a telling indicator, just like the physical health is a telling indicator, the, the symptoms. Um, and symptoms are just the body's best attempt at dealing with the current situation. So, you know, the reason you know when you get a cold is because you manifest the symptoms of a cold, which is your body's best attempt to deal with the cold. Um, emotional symptoms are the same. Energetic symptoms are the same. So, so you can measure things at these more subtle levels. But remember, what we're looking for when we take that data that comes out of the camera. Uh, we take your pulse rate, we take your, we actually take your blood pressure, we take your heart rate variability, we take your respiration. All of those things are unique to you at that point in time. And that data then is appended to our scanning algorithm, which then runs the scan that determines your biological preferences. So, uh, so we're taking the input that we get from the camera and we're then applying it in a, in a way that creates the scan. Is it scanning your eye at all, like ideology, or is it scanning meridians or blood flow, um, micro blood flow to parts of the face? Like, um, what is it reading when, it, when it's observing the face? Well, there are multiple points on the face that it targets. And then uh, it reads changes in things that occur at those points. Mostly it's blood flow, uh, mostly it's respiration, uh, but there's a tremendous amount of information you can pick up from those inputs. So it's picking up information, um, but it, it maybe you could explain that. Th so it's different than the hand cradle because the hand cradle, my understanding is this is this a bit of a biofeedback, right? It's giving a stimulus and then testing the response right and in the face scan is it doing the same thing or is this simply gathering information like how does it do that biofeedback where it goes ashley likes you know lavender essential oil or ashley would really benefit from more magnesium like how does it uh, read that uh because we're using our own smartphone to scan our face uh the difference is it's a different algorithm the hand cradle uses an algorithm that is a stimulus response. The, the new technology, the link, uses the, the real-time unique biometric input to append an algorithm that will then run the scan in its, in its completion, start to finish. And then the scan, because of the way the algorithm is built, then after the fact, we go back and run the comparative scan. So instead of doing it in real time, we actually, it's all done after the fact, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, I understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, but, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm, so my, 
how I understand kinesiology is that it is, it, and of course, like I am not the expert in this. You're the expert. I'm just, I want to make sure all the listeners grasp it. And so, um, so with kinesiology, the body, you know, you, you, you say, okay, body, do you like magnesium? And the body goes, yes, I like magnesium. And it, you know, it, it's giving that response back. So that biofeedback is happening. So you're saying that it's testing it after the fact? Yes. I, yeah. I, I like, I don't fully understand how that works, but I'm so eager to, to figure it out. If you could maybe break this down a bit um, so I could understand it. Um, it's kind of like Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> um, it, you know, we, we lean more and more as we continue to develop the technology, we lean more and more onto the quantum concepts and quantum applications. Um, and, and so it, it really is like the experiment with the cat, uh, you know, it, you know, if you open it, the cat dies. And if you don't, the cat lives, but you can run things in in a way that time is i'm trying to think of the right way to say this time becomes less of a factor oh fascinating that, that's how we observe the, the the observation of the universe changes the outcome and that's yeah. what they see in quantum physics so uh, so so when it it scans the face and then it runs the algorithm and then it's actually seeing it doesn't matter about time so much because then it's seeing this is the response to these things, which blows my mind, but I believe in quantum physics. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm no. all for this. Well, the, the other the other cool thing about us is at a conscious level, we process about 200,000 pieces of information a second. Mm -hmm. At a subconscious level, we process over 400 million pieces a mm -hmm. second. So we're at least 2,000 times smarter than we think. In other words, the smartest part of me is the part of me that I don't have any conscious connection to. And a lot of, because we're tapping into quantum fields and ap making applications from those theories, we're not talking to you consciously. We're talking to you subconsciously. And so you can give us information that may be timeless. And we can create a scan that then warps time in a way that the scan comes out with information that's valuable because we do show you your biological preference and, and to some degree cause and effect. Again, it's not diagnostic. We're not trying to tell you you have this disease and this is the, the cure. All we're saying is your biological preference indicates you're weak here, you like this, if we put the two together, this is what happens to your biological preference. Why is there a need for us uh, for rescans if there's no uh, need for time? Well, um, we're not we're not completely timeless, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, and and I think that. Uh, you know, as we evolve as humans, we might be we might become more timeless in our concepts and, and applications. But, you know, I do find as a person, I do find comfort in getting a, an update that I can see at a conscious level and, you know, making conscious decisions about. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it's all part and parcel the same. So I love that you thought, hey, how could we take this to the next level and you know, everyone has a smartphone in their hand. How can we make it really accessible? And you, this is before the pandemic when everyone was doing, you know, telehealth, you started developing this. So um, this is something where you can work with a practitioner anywhere around the world. And, and that, that's really neat. That makes it very, very accessible. Um, can you give some stories of success or recent experiences uh, where, this technology brought great insight and helped that person get closer to, to their true health? Uh, I remember a, a young woman who was probably in her, um, 
oh, I guess she was in her early 30s. And uh, she was very compromised, very weak. Uh, she had, uh, again, she had been to a lot of places and, and uh, she got temporary help, but nothing seemed to work. Uh, and I ran a scan on her and it was obvious to me that she was so weak that it would be very easy to overtreat her. And uh, so what I ended up doing, I ended up scanning her acupoints and I took the acupoint that was showing the most positive response. In other words, this point's the one that she was really most interested in having treated. And then I took my smallest needle and I put that needle in that point. And about five minutes later, I took the needle out and said, okay, you're done for today. Uh, come on back. Now, see, I was treating this woman energetically. So the next day I had her come back in again. If I was treating her with supplements, I would not have done that, done it this way. Mm -hmm. But I was concerned about over treating her with any kind of supplements. So the next day I had her come back in. I did the same thing. Uh, and over time, then, then I moved into some homeopathic remedies and then I moved into some supplements. Well, this woman, uh, I'm trying to think how long it took us to get her turned around, maybe six, eight weeks. And I didn't see her every day. I, you know, I did the next day and the day after that, but then I said, okay, come back in three days. And so maybe twice a week I was seeing her and we were just, I was just spoon feeding her baby steps and and we took her from a basket case to back to full functioning. Um, she was actually suffering from chronic fatigue is what it amounted to, but uh, and it just it was just a different approach to chronic fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, let's see another woman, a uh, young woman in her late twenties came into the clinic. Uh, we were we were doing a fair amount of e-box work and she had heard about it and she came in because her marriage was on the rocks and um and so uh, i i did a scan on her and the the supplements that showed up uh, and the scan results made me suspicious that she was suffering from some kind of you know, mood disorder, some depression. And I said, have you had any depression? And she said, oh yeah. She said, I had a, my second child about six months ago and I've been suffering postpartum depression ever since. And I said, okay, well this make, these remedies make sense. We'll give you these. And then what we did is we did an, an Evox session and uh, th th there's a particular protocol it's called transgenerational perception reframing. I won't tell you the whole protocol, but but the bottom line is, uh, it turns out that her mother was the first person that we wanted to reframe. And so she went through the process, reframed on her mother and, and uh, went on her way. She had the supplements and I said, okay, I'll see you in a week. She came back a week later and um, she looked better. She had more shin in her eyes. She had more light in her eyes and her complexion was brighter. And I said, hey, you look better. How are you feeling? And she said, oh, I'm feeling better. But she said, and a funny thing happened last week. When I went home, my mom called. And then she stopped and she she uh, she paused to see if I would react. And I didn't react. Okay, your mom called. And then she said, and we talked for two hours. And she stopped again and looked for my reaction. I didn't react because it's like, hey, I've got four daughters and they can talk to their mom for two hours too. So, <laughs> so, so what? And... Uh, and she said, no, you don't understand. She said, my mom and I hate, hate each other. We, if she calls me on the phone, which never happens, in 30 seconds, we're screaming at each other. So the fact mm -hmm. that she called the day I went home was, was crazy. And the fact that we could talk for two hours was a miracle. And well, that's what happens when you do perception reframing. It's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it actually changes your energy posture which then changes your field position in the zero point field and, and all kinds of amazing things happen. Mm -hmm. But, um, but her, uh, you know, we got her past the depression. We got her marriage, you know, 
hit solid ground and it was a good, you know, her de- her husband owned his own business and I think they were having some financial problems, but that resolved and, uh, and we got her past, you know, the postpartum stuff and she was a happy camper. So it's a lot of fun to do holistic medicine because you see changes in people's lives that are beyond just the symptoms and, uh, it's really gratifying, you know. I I love what I do. Could practitioners learn how to do evox and then do it um, do, like virtually, like not in person, or do you have to be in person to do evox with them? No, you, all of our technology can be used remotely, including evox. So cool. Yeah. So it's with evox. You are, you know, the practitioner. I I could be here in my uh, clinic on my computer, you could be at your home and, and we could run an e-box session between the two of us. Oh my gosh, that's so neat. Years ago, and her name escapes me, I did an interview with this woman who was like, it's like a PhD and she, she had figured out that she, she created a computer program that could listen to anyone's voice and the computer program would, would say, what's what's up with that person so like if someone's about to have a heart attack or if someone you know has for example cancer or some some sort like real major disruption in their in their body it could pick pick that up in the voice and that's why i started to learn like there's so much we don't see but that makes sense because like you said you can hear someone and like get a gut feeling like something's off or you know I think it's 64 or 68% of communications unconscious that it's we're, we're observing uh, micro changes in the face. There's yeah. uh, blood flow changes uh, as we talk, as emotions go through us, there's different blood flow will uh, enter different parts of the face that micro muscles will tighten and relax. And we don't do it consciously. Um, but but unconsciously we can perceive that in others and we can hear it in people's voice. So it's so interesting that we could tap into and listen to someone and get this deep information about what's going on in the unconscious in order to help them uh, come come to some major healing. Yeah, it turns out that words are probably the least significant aspect of voice. Right. <laughs> Uh, you know, if, you know, people who are listening to us, uh, you know, they know what part of the world you were born in because of your accent and for me too. And they know that Mm -hmm. you're a woman and I'm a man. They know, I bet they could guess our our age within five years and they know our general state of health and they know what kind of a mood we're in. They know if we're enjoying this conversation, all of those things, we don't have to express in words that just comes through. And it takes maybe three or four words and you can know all those things. So voice has an incredible amount of information. A few months ago, my husband's family, who is from Chile and speaks Spanish, uh, came to visit for a few weeks. I don't speak Spanish. Um, You know, I know how to ask for where the bathroom is, but that's pretty much it. And um, they would, I mean, they were trying to be polite and speak English, but when they, when the family was talking amongst themselves, <laughs> they were always talking Spanish. And I couldn't believe how much I could understand based on body language, based on um, the tone of their voice, based on, you know, h- how they were looking at each other. I could really pick up on a lot of the communication and my, I, I played a game of uh, guess what, guess what they're talking about. <laughs> And and a few times I interjected and answered a question in English accurately uh, because like, you know, the mom was asking the daughter or something like that. And I would interject and be like, oh, they have this on the menu or the bathroom's over there or, you know, we're going to go do that after this activity. And (laughs) and they'd look at me because they and then they'd kind of like scan me with their eyes up and down like, does she understand us? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I had so much fun with that. It's it is really interesting how much you can pick up when like I just I was like I'm just going to see how much I can perceive, right? And see how much yeah. my unconscious mind can let me know about this communication 
And uh, and then I also just didn't care if I got it wrong. I was just going to jump in and pretend like, you know, like I knew what they were talking about. And I couldn't believe how how many times I got it right. Yeah. Um, and so so it's it, it, there is so much more to our supercomputer between our ears than than we even understand. We're just scratching the surface and understanding. Oh, yeah. I love that you're tapping into this with people. Um, so where where do you see this technology going? Where do you see the evolution of this uh, taking us? Well, hopefully to a healthier place. <laughs> um, you know, the, the goal really is to improve the quality of life for patients and practitioners. And, uh, and that's the goal. And if we can improve physical health, emotional health, mental health, that would uh, make the world a better place. How accurate is the 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 Zyto app scan? Um, do you have you tested it against like labs and been like, well, is that person really deficient in this? Or like, is there is there a way that you have fi figured out the accuracy of it? Like, you know, there are there times it's wrong when it comes to like it'll say, you know, we have. You have unresolved anger to, to resolve, and I'm like, well, I don't feel angry. I don't, I don't know why it would say that. You know, so or is that really unconscious and and it's deep in there, and um, it's letting me know that there's something I don't even know about myself. Um, so I'm just wondering how, how through the years have you tested its accuracy? The validation is primarily clinical. Uh, the challenge is that energy precedes everything else. Mm -hmm. you will, you know, uh, you, you probably have said, I feel like I'm coming down with something. Yeah. And lo, lo and behold, two days later, you got full on symptoms. And then you, and then you say, yeah, I feel like I've turned the corner. I'm on my, I feel better. And then two days later, you're better. Well, when you say I feel, that's because you're sensing your energy shift. And there isn't a lab that can test an energy shift. There may be, but you know, we, we haven't looked for one. But what we're doing is we're measuring energetic input. And so the most valid evidence that we are accurate within a, an acceptable degree is that clinically the, the data is validated. In other words, the person comes in with cramps, magnesium shows up, you give them magnesium and their cramps go away. It's like, okay, that's clinical evidence that the information we got was accurate or had value. So what we tell people is, I can guarantee that the information is consistent because it's based on solid mathematical formulas that don't change. And the thing that we don't claim is, again, to be diagnosing a disease or identifying a treatment for a disease. But, but we do get data that has value clinically because over the years we've been doing this, our customers and, you know, our own, my own experience, it's, it bears it out. It does have value. And you get coincidental stuff like you mentioned with your, your son and your husband, you know, you run the scan and you go, I'll be darned. This makes a lot of sense. I mean, you mm -hmm. just see that. You see that kind of stuff. So, yeah. And there's also, there's no harm in it. There's like, it's so, there's no in, invasiveness whatsoever. Um, and everything it's recommending is, is helpful. So you're either going to get positive results or no results, but at least, you know, it's, it's at least it's not like taking a pharmaceutical and having negative results we're, we're we're moving in a positive direction with some good feedback and and that's we're just looking for how, what's the body communicating right how can we listen to the body in a new way in a deeper way and help it come back into balance i love that you you say you know it's really picking up on that energetic field which is where everything starts and and then and then we're helping the body come back into balance. We're helping also the energetic body come back into balance. I've had that experience. I had a client. We just helped her energetic body come back into balance and all her physical symptoms went away within 24 hours. Like, boom. Yeah. She had been suffering for six years and all it took was an, an energetic shift 
And and that was just wild, wild that something so her the symptoms are late in the physical, but her it, it, it the treatment wasn't physical. The treatment was energetic. So just really fascinating. And a lot of people who don't understand that 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 our body is an electrical body is an electrical being. Um, you know, it sounds like new age. And for some people, it's like anti-Christian, right? It's new age. This is, you know, this is what the Bible warns us against. And and I'm like, I am all for making sure that you, you know, what you're doing is in alignment with your religion. I happen to be a Christian. Um, but I also understand like, you know, J Jesus lay hands and healed. And he said, you are going to do this too. And you will do greater things. He said we what that it's like our our birthright as as Christians is to do healing. And and so we have to like recognize that we're not just physical meat sacks, that we are these spiritual beings living in this in this beautiful body that was gifted to us by God. That's my belief. Yeah, me too. And just know that you are more than this meat sack. You are so much more. And if you if you've never had an experience with the the energetic realm, if you've ever landed in a clinic or a hospital where they had to attach electrodes to you, guess what? They were measuring energy in your body, and it's just amazing. We of course have energy in our body. Um, they talk about how how much electricity it takes to run our our, our brain. That I can't remember how many batteries, but it was like a handful of D, D batteries, D cell batteries. Uh, what the the body has to uh, produce to to run the nervous system, and of course we're electrical beings, right? So so we have a physical body, but we have so much more than that. We are so much more than that, and just make sure that the medicine that you're using addresses not just your physical body, but is bringing your whole being back into balance. And I love that this is another way to to guide us, to to listen to the body and guide us. Um, Dr. Von Cook, is there anything else you want to make sure that you convey, that you share about the technology, uh, the Zyto, the Evo? Um, so you've got the, the hand cradle. There's also this app. And um, so those who are listening who are practitioners can – plug into this and and you use this this technology either in person or uh, virtually with their clients and then for those who are not practitioners who want to experience this for themselves please go to takeyoursupplements.com they'll make it very affordable very affordable for you to experience this and to uh, be guided also by the uh, practitioners and health coaches to help you determine um, what path to go on in terms of supplements and diet and lifestyle to support your body's ability to heal itself. Um, it speak, speak, just speak to those, um, who are super interested. Is there anything else you wanted to make sure that you conveyed today? Wow. We had a fun time, Ashley. I think we've <laughs> conveyed a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I, I guess, uh, it works. Maybe that's the final message. That's the sometimes the most amazing thing about it is that it actually makes a difference. It actually it actually works in a clinic, clinical setting. And, you know, for people who just want to have better health, mm -hmm. it does make sense to listen to your body on an individual basis. Right. And and because it's such a non-invasive approach, it's it's like worth giving a try. It's worth exploring. And I love that just uh be willing to try new things and see what happens. So thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been such a pleasure. Um, I'm, I'm very looking forward to having you back when you come out with um, new technology that you want to come share uh, with us. We would love to have you. I'll make a note of that, Ashley. It'd be fun to be back. These are the same supplements that I have been using myself personally, my family, and my clients for the last 12 and a half years. These are the same supplements that helped me to overcome my chronic diseases. I used to have type 2 diabetes, chronic adrenal fatigue, chronic infections, polycystic ovarian syndrome, infertility, and I don't have any of those things anymore. The holistic doctors that informed these supplements discovered 
that the root cause of disease is a lack of key nutrients. There are 90 essential nutrients the body needs, and we're not getting them from our food anymore because of the farming practices of the last 100 years. So no matter how healthy we eat, we're still missing what our body needs to create optimal health. Because you listen to this health podcast and you're looking for health solutions, you will love working with the team at TakeYourSupplements.com. These are health coaches that overcame, just like me, overcame their own health issues using, of course, eating healthy, healthy lifestyle. But the key fundamental thing that they added were these supplements. These supplements encompass all 90 essential nutrients. And when you talk to your health coach, they will help to customize a plan specifically to your needs and your health goals. You will start feeling amazing right away. Within the first month of taking these supplements, everyone notices better sleep, more mental clarity, better energy, overall sense of well-being that takes over their life. And they are so happy that they got on these supplements. I want you to give it a try. There's a money back guarantee and there's amazing health coaches waiting to help you at TakeYourSupplements.com and it's free to talk to them. So what are you waiting for? Go to TakeYourSupplements.com right now, sign up for a free consultation And in a month, you could be feeling on top of the world, just like I did. I was so sick. I felt so horrible. And I overcame that. I had to obviously make healthy choices around every every area of my life. I had to change my diet. I had to change my lifestyle. But I needed to fill in those nutrient gaps. And that's where Take Your Supplements comes in. They help you to make sure that you're getting all 90 essential nutrients. So your cell, every cell in your body, all 37.2 trillion cells in your body will be bathed in all the nutrients that they need so that you can live an optimal life full of health and vitality at any age. Go to TakeYourSupplements.com and talk to one of them today. They can help you right now to begin to make that health transformation. That's TakeYourSupplements.com.